Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So this isn't my usual format of what I do in terms of video work. I just thought it'd be nice to have a proper sit down in my garden and just go through what I take out with me whenever I do my wildlife photography. Um, so this is basically a what's in my camera bag video. Um, if anyone's looking to get any new equipment or interested in how to get into wildlife photography and what sort of equipment is required, then hopefully this will provide uh, some sort of advice um, and a perspective of what sort of equipment you will need to venture down this route. So to begin with, I should show you the bag. So this is what I take with me everywhere I go for my wildlife photography. So this is a think tank retrospective bag. Um, I very much wanted to have a bag that I felt would be comfortable and not so much as a very bulky uh, like head to torso sort of length but something that could contain all of my equipment um, so it's very sturdy as you can see it's quite a square format it comes with uh, metal grips to keep the top secure and then if I was to undo these oh the sun's come out now um, so we've got a zip fold at the top for which you can gain access to uh, the camera from the top and there is also a, a hidden compartment in the lid as well and then on the front we've got another compartment here so this is where I normally store uh, things like my spare batteries uh, my SD cards and anything for the day so if I need to take food out with me if I'm out for the whole day I'll often put snacks in here um, and just any other sort of essentials that I need personally and then we've got some nice pockets on the side and here is the um, waterproof casing haven't used it yet i've been quite fortunate with the weather but i think even without uh, the casing in sort of light rain conditions this is quite well and it will dry quite quickly afterwards and then this side it's got a um a clasp to which i attach my tripod in here so it sits on the outside quite nicely um and then on the back we have got back compartment here there are going to be some uh, jets going around that's just how it is a lot of the time a lot of the jets are practicing around here so hopefully it won't interfere too much um, but yes like I said I've got the back compartment here so again easy access to where the cameras and the lenses will be um, and yeah it's just a really comfortable bag I find it really comfortable it's got like a cushion um, compartment so yeah all in all it's just a really uh, a nice bag that I can store all of my you know my long lenses in um, and extras which is really good so this is the bag that I use and then we'll move on to the cameras and the equipment that I use for my wildlife photography to my main camera body this is it this is the Canon EOS 60 um, I actually purchased this from a photographer friend of mine um, a couple of years back or a few years now and he does have his own YouTube channel uh, he does landscape photography so if you want to check him out um, look for his name in the description below um, but yeah he did purchase this um, wasn't using it so I purchased it uh, so it's kind of second hand but it was basically brand new in box hardly used um, and it's just a good all-rounder um, it's lightweight it's got good camera quality um, and yeah it's just been you know the body that I've used for all of my work since I purchased this I think it must have been uh, 2017 or 18 um, and then this is the camera strap I actually got this as a gift and I've had quite a few people uh, comment on it asking what it is. Um, the only thing I know is that the brand looks like it's USA gear, um, but it's really soft neoprene strap and it's also got uh, two little pockets um, to store um, easy access to things like SD cards or even batteries. Um, so yeah, really nice. Um, it's good, it's got camouflage wear on it and it's just really soft and it doesn't strain the neck too much, especially when I've got my long lens attached. And speaking of long lenses, so this is my main one this is uh, the sigma 150 to 600 uh, contemporary lens i think the f is at uh, 6.3 so i do have um camouflage sort of sleeves um but i don't put it on to where i would do the zoom or the focusing just because it interferes um but otherwise it's just an all black uh, lens like I said, it's a 150 to 600 mil, 
um, and it's just it's just great all round. Um, I haven't had any issues with this uh, since I purchased this. Again, I got this second hand. Um, I think it's through uh, Wax. I got this through, um, and yeah, it's just all round. It's got um, a lock here, so if I want to fix it to six hundred or anything below that, I can, and it holds it in place. Um, it's got the automatic focus, manual focus, and there's also a manual override. Um, so if it's picking up bits of grass, um, then I can manually uh, alter it and then it will still uh, use automatic focus once that's set in place. Um, and it does come with obviously the hood. I don't use it often, uh, but I do take it out in the bag anyway, just in case, you know, I'm dealing with quite bright conditions or I just need a bit of cover. Um, and yeah, it's just an all round great piece of kit. Um, it, is, it can get quite heavy. Um, um, but again, uh, the qualities that come out of this have been really good. Um, I've had this for, I think, the last two years. And again, no issues. Um, Sigma is quite a good uh, alternative brand if you want to, you know, if there's a Canon lens that's still quite expensive for you, then Sigma's a reasonably good um, brand to purchase. And then with the Sigma, I also have an extender. So this is a, a 1.4 teleconverter. So this gives me, I think it goes up to 800, or just below 800 uh, from the 600. So it gives me uh, just that extra distance that I need if there is a subject that's really far away. Excuse the jets. Um, and it, it does go down a stop. Um, and when I'm using it, when I'm looking for the viewfinder with this, um, I have to manually focus uh, with this on, but if I do go to live view, um, it just, it does it automatically. Um, so I can still use automatic focus, just not when I'm viewing it through the actual viewfinder rather than through the screen. Uh, but again, a great little piece of kit, um, especially if I'm looking at things further afield. Um, and yeah, I can get really good, decent pictures from it still without using so, so much quality really big cloud coming over now so I'm going to try and be quick but this is the other lens that I use um, not as often as my 150 to 600 um, but this is uh, the Canon 300mm fixed f4 um, so I've used this primarily for um, if I'm photographing you know like smaller insects in the garden um, and if there's any sort of nice kind of meadows I used this when I did the bluebell video um, a few months back and Again, really good quality. It's quite lightweight in comparison to the Sigma. Um, and yeah, the, the F4 gives some really nice depth of field as well. Um, like I said, I haven't used it much, but I, it's just good to have an alternative uh, lens if I'm out in the field and for whatever reason, I can't use the Sigma, but that hasn't happened yet. Um, but again, really good essential piece of kit. And then this isn't technically mine. This is my husband's. Um, but it is a, it's the Canon 750D and it comes with uh, the kit lens which is an 18 to 55 um, so I have used this for when I did start uh, doing vlogging and yeah again it's got a, a nice flip out screen so I can view myself when I am recording make sure I'm in focus um, and I've used it on occasion for doing um, more uh, videos where it's not been it's picking up now um, and this can actually uh, the 300 uh, lens can fit to this as well um, but I don't really use it that often um, I'm quite good with just doing the video and photography work through my own uh, Canon 6D um, but it's a good alternative if, any, if anything was to happen to my other Canon body um, I can use a 300mm on this and if I get any video recording where I'm wanting to get the landscape or things like that then I will use this. Uh, like I said, it's not mine, um, but I can use it for my photography if I want to, and it does fit in my bag, along with the other lenses. So that's my main piece of kit. Um, and then you would have seen this a, a few videos back, uh, but I got a, a, a new tripod. This is the Vanguard uh, VO2, um, and it's got a, a gimbal fitting for the top. Um, extremely lightweight I think it's like a carbon uh, material um, and these legs can actually extend out to uh, I think it's 80 degree angle so I can get really low to my subject um, and still have it steady enough to sit on the gimbal and not have to hand hold it so it's really good for that like I said it's really lightweight 
um, and it can hold, I think it's up to six kilograms of weight. So for my long lenses, this will do fine. Um, and again, haven't had any issues with it. It's got quite a few um, turn knobs on top. And so obviously one to fit. Um, we've got one which allows the ball to move like so. Um, and then the friction of the ball. So if you want to keep it in place or have it a bit more um, smooth moving, I can alter that. And then the base also moves as well. Um, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a task to sort of remember what is what, especially when I'm trying to keep an eye on my subject and I need to alter this in whatever way. Um, but yeah, all in all, um, another good piece of kit. Um, and with the gimbal head, it just makes uh, recording and tracking the subject relatively smooth. Um, so yeah, really good Vanguard again. And then additional pieces. So this is uh, something I've got recently, it's a Boya um, microphone uh, with the dead cat and this is, I have been trying to use it when I've been uh, recording content um, where I want to get more natural sounds. Um, so I haven't used this fully yet but I would like to, um, especially if I'm coming across subjects where you know they have, you know, they emit a loud call or anything like that. But as you can probably tell, a lot of the environments that I'm working in at the minute are quite windy. It's very exposed, so any noise or wind that comes across, um, it does pick it up. Um, but I'm still hopeful to use it um, again if I want to get more natural sounds at some point in the future rather than just dubbing music on top. And then I've got a bean bag. Um, this is quite old. I don't know how long I've actually had this for, but it's been with me for quite some time. Um, I either use this to uh, rest the camera and lens on if I don't have my tripod to hand or for me to rest on, it's quite good for that and then I also use it in my car and it sort of sits on uh, the car window if I roll it down and again it just provides a bit of um, stable protection so that goes with me as well and then this is um, my waterproof covering that I have for my long lens on my camera so that's just it in full um, but yeah it fits over the Sigma really nice especially when it's fully extended and it's got drawstrings so it can sort of wrap around uh, the camera body quite tightly and the same for the end of the lens it can just pull the toggle and it fits around nice and yeah it works really well and I can still have access to the camera I can sort of fit my hands through um, so yeah just if it's like really pouring it down and I just want to have a bit of cover of my lens and the Canon body uh, then I use this. Um, it's, it's really nice and it, again lightweight. I always like things that are lightweight in comparison to my Sigma. And then as you would have probably seen in not the latest video but the second to last video I do have um, optics that I carry around with me so I won't go too much into detail with this because I did um, make a video specifically for this but I'm currently using um, a Go Sky a Titan roof prism binoculars and they also come with a phone adapter. Um, I use this out at Phantom Marsh in the video and it's really good clear optics um, just so I'm not lifting up my camera um, each time I wanted to find out what that distant subject is and yeah it's a 10 by 42 um, and it is just really really good optics compared to what I've had. I think I had or oh, I do have a 30 year old set of binoculars that I got from the charity shop um, and they're good, they're decent, but nothing in comparison to what's being made now. Um, so it's nice to have, um, you know, an extra piece of optics kit um, rather than just lifting up my camera each time. And like I said, it does come with a phone adapter, so this attaches to uh, one of the eyepieces and you can record um, your own sort of photos or videos on your phone. And it fits pretty much all uh, smartphones. If you want more details on that, go and check out the uh, Frampton video from about a week or so ago. I'll put the tag whichever side it goes and then just going on to sort of every day um, I do have the little microphone here um, that I do use for um, talking um, if I remember to put it on um, and then obviously spare batteries can go in there I do have a case for my SD cards so I have quite large SD cards um, I've got 64 currently in my uh, Canon body um, and these are 128 so it allows me to take I think something in excess of 20,000 pictures or something like that an insane amount um, but again if I'm out in the field all day 
um, and you know there's a lot of subject matter to photograph then it's good to just have you know additional SD cards as well as big size SD cards to take with you so you're not having to frantically change full SD cards around and then pretty much take this everywhere I'll go with me this is my uh, bird and mammal recording book and pen um, so I just like to record you know what I've seen wherever I've gone I'll make a note of the date um, the location roughly and then I just write down what I see so just going back I made notes of what I saw um, on the Isle of Mull near um, a place called Loch Nakeel so I saw the sea grey heron, oyster catcher, rock pipit, hooded crow, curlews they were really nice to photograph um, grey lag goose, black headed gull, lesser uh, black back gull, herring gull and also swallows um, so yeah it's sort of just nice to look back um, on, sp on particular days and just say oh yeah I remember seeing that that day um, it's mostly birds but I do tend to uh, record if there's any mammals as well but it is more primarily birds um, especially you know living in the fens you've got such a massive expanse of sky it's hard not to see you know uh, a distant red kite flying around um, I've got plenty of birds in the garden as well so I'll record stuff at home as well as where I go for my photography um, yeah I think that's pretty much it that's sort of what is in my bag currently um, like I said I am looking to either get um, my own second Canon body um, but I think the way things are going in a technological sense um, a lot more people are now moving to mirrorless cameras and um, I'm not fully on board with that yet I'm quite happy with what I have with uh, you know the 6D and the Sigma lens and if you, I was to go to mirrorless then I'll basically have to restart my whole kit um, because my lenses wouldn't be compatible um, so I'm in an hour in that at the minute but like I said the kit I have it works for me um, pretty much everything is second hand as well um, you, you know you don't have to buy the most expensive kit to get the best pictures um, you can get you know a couple of generations old kit and the quality is still really really good and then it's a matter of case of um, taking it to editing um, so I don't use Photoshop, I actually use PaintShop Pro. I use it during my college years um, and then um, after studying and then after going into work I actually refound it um, and it's got really good um, like a digital noise remover on it and it's, uh, it's incredible. Um, if you want to know more about um, what I do in terms of editing with PaintShop Pro um, let me know, put them in the comments. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like I said, that's all the stuff that I have uh, in my Canon bag currently, or camera bag currently. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all to tell you right now. Um, I have a couple of um, day trips coming up very, sh very soon. Um, as the autumn season sort of comes around, there's, you know, winter visitors are starting to visit along the coast. Um, the deer rutting season's coming up, which I'm quite looking forward to hopefully going out to photograph again. I haven't done it for I think two years um, so it'd be lovely to go to a spot hopefully for red deer or even fallow deer and to photograph them during the rut um, there's also seal season coming up um, again I'd love to go back to the coast uh, one early morning um, and I've got a couple of other places going outside of the fens that I may or may not set up um, a project for so I think <laughs> I'm gonna end it there there's a big cloud coming over and the jets are still quite loud unfortunately um, and the birds are going off as well. I have a whole host of house sparrows that live um, in sort of the, the hedge behind me. I think there's a, a flock of about 40 that are living in there at the minute, so they're very noisy, um, especially when the food is brought out. Um, but delightful birds, um, they have suffered a decline, um, like a lot of other species. So it's nice to hear them, however loud they are. Uh, so, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have your go-to kits that you'd like to share, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, again, I like to sort of build up this community of other, you know, photographers, amateur photographers, or just people that are interested in wildlife photography. Um, so feel free to put whatever you want in the comments relating to, you know, wildlife photography gear. Um, and yeah, I'll hopefully see you out on the field again using this equipment.